Hey guys, it's Poe back again with another video. Uh, a couple years ago I did a video on upgrading a gaming laptop that I had purchased and while I don't think it was that popular of a video, I could tell by the comments that it probably did help quite a few people. So I bought for Black Friday last year my wife a new Ultrabook from HP. I got an incredible deal on it. Uh, I think it was right around $450 after I had them upgrade the screen from 720p to 1080p. Uh, picked that up. It is going to need a couple of upgrades, so I figured that I would take you all along for the ride on this one as well. So unfortunately, at the time of recording this video, you cannot get this laptop from HP for the $399 price that I paid for it. Uh, although with AMD just releasing their new laptop CPUs, I've got a feeling that HP is probably going to put this one back on sale again. Uh, and at one point, uh, it was as inexpensive as $379. So just make sure if you're interested in this laptop, uh, keep an eye out on HP's website for it. Uh, at $450, it came with a Ryzen 7 4700U, which is an 8-core, eight 8-thread eight CPU. Uh, it does have integrated Vega graphics. Um, this particular model came with 8 gigabytes of RAM and a 128 gigabyte SATA M.2 SSD. So uh, as soon as I purchased it, I knew I'd be upgrading the RAM and the hard drive. Uh, so I figured this would make for a perfect video. I've got a feeling that quite a few people purchased this laptop on Black Friday. Uh, and there's probably quite a few people that also want to upgrade it and may have some questions. So my plan for upgrading this laptop was to go with a 500 gigabyte NVMe uh, M.2 drive and I bought an external M.2 enclosure so that I could just put the new drive into that, plug it up to the laptop, clone the internal hard drive, and that way I won't have to worry about reinstalling Windows after I have completed the upgrade. Unfortunately, I did have some issues related to upgrading the memory in this laptop. Uh, not a huge deal, but it is something that you need to be aware of, and I will double back to that at the end of the video and explain my trials and tribulations in regards to the RAM in this laptop. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get started.
All right, so I got the upgrade complete. Uh, myself and my wife have been using the laptop for about a week now, uh, and it's running flawlessly. Uh, so the upgrade was a success. Um, but I did want to go over with you some of the issues that I had, specifically in regard to the RAM and the RAM configuration on this laptop. So when the laptop first arrived, I was taking a look at the underside to see how the bottom panel came off so that I could get inside it to upgrade it. And I realized that it ships with rubber feet on the bottom that are double sided taped to the bottom of the laptop. And you do have to remove those to get access to some screws that you'll need to take out to get the back panel off. I did not want to remove those multiple times and then have them not be sticky enough and, and it become an issue where they didn't stay on the laptop. So like an idiot, I went ahead and purchased a single 8 gigabyte stick of RAM thinking that HP had shipped this laptop with a single 8 gigabyte stick installed and an open slot that I could put the second 8 gigabyte stick in. After my upgrades arrived, I opened up the laptop to begin and I realized that HP had shipped it with two 4 gigabyte sticks rather than a single 8 gigabyte stick. Now, realistically, that's actually the way that they should have done it. That's a good thing because that means the laptop comes to you running in a dual channel configuration. But that is the downside in that when you want to upgrade it from eight gigabytes to 16 gigabytes, instead of just adding an additional eight gigabyte stick, you do have to replace both four gigabyte sticks. Uh, so that does cause the upgrade to go up in price. So once I opened up the laptop and realized that it had two four gigabyte sticks, uh, I went to my container that I keep all my used parts in and I did have some leftover laptop RAM from another build that I had done. It was actually previously in a small form factor desktop build. Uh, I believe it was some G-Skill RAM uh, and it ran at 2800 megahertz, which isn't quite as fast as the 3200 megahertz that this laptop ships with, but I was willing to make the sacrifice so that I could go ahead and get this thing upgraded to 16 gigs. Uh, so I went ahead and installed the G-Skill, booted it up, it booted fine, but I realized that it was only running at 2400 megahertz. And specifically for Ryzen CPUs, uh, you want to try to get the memory speed as quick as possible as that will uh, very much make a difference in performance, uh, especially for um, professional type workloads. If you're doing anything like video editing, uh, it gives you a huge hit in latency uh, if you are running slower RAM. And so while I was initially okay with making the trade off from 3200 megahertz to 2800 megahertz, I did not want to make the drop down to 2400 megahertz, which is what it was now running at with this G-Skill RAM installed. So the next thing I did was boot to the BIOS. Um, I was hoping that the BIOS would have some settings available for me to adjust the RAM, but unfortunately with this being a laptop, uh, there's just really not the same kind of granular control that you would get on a desktop, uh, a desktop computer's BIOS. Uh, so there was no way to change the RAM speed and it was stuck running at 2400 megahertz. So what I did was take that RAM back out and I went ahead and just removed one four gigabyte stick and installed the new eight gigabyte stick that I had initially ordered. Uh, so now it has a total capacity of 12 gigabytes. While it's not ideal to be running eight gigabytes in one channel and four gigabytes in the other channel, uh, for what myself and my wife plan on using this laptop for, it should be perfectly fine. Uh, I would not recommend running it in this configuration for any uh, heavy workloads, anything like video editing, but again, for browsing the internet and doing some light photo editing, this shouldn't be a problem for us. Now this brings me to the main point uh, about the RAM in this laptop and what you need to pay the most attention to. So if you are going to upgrade the RAM in this laptop, um, you want to make sure that you get RAM that matches the exact same settings and specifications of the RAM that shipped in this laptop. Since there's no settings in the BIOS to manipulate the RAM speed or the timings, uh, if the RAM that you buy does not match the RAM that ships in this laptop, it is going to default to a lower speed. And with it shipping with 3200 megahertz speed, um, upgrading from 8 gigabytes to 16 gigabytes is fantastic. But if that comes at the loss of 
speed if you go down from say 3200 megahertz to 2400 megahertz or god forbid 2133 megahertz um, i think you really will be hurting yourself there i would rather just have 8 gigabytes at 3200 megahertz versus 16 gigabytes at a much lower speed so um, I will link the RAM below that I purchased um, that does match the specifications of the RAM that initially ships with this laptop. Overall, this is a great laptop for the money that I paid for it. Again, with AMD releasing their new mobile CPUs, I've got a feeling that this one is going to go back on sale again. So if this is something you're interested in, definitely keep an eye out on HP's website. An 8-core, eight 8-thread eight CPU. Um, I paid $450 for this thing, and that is, in my eyes, that's great value. All right, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, I hope this helps some of you out that maybe purchased this laptop on Black Friday. Um, if you did purchase this laptop on Black Friday, um, head down to the comments and let me know what you think about it. Uh, additionally, if you have any questions about it or any questions about this upgrade, again, leave me a comment down below, and I'm more than happy to respond. Um, please subscribe if you are not already and don't forget to hit that like button and we will see you in the next one.